This is 88.5 WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut. Joe Kelly here, the upper room on this Monday night as we celebrate the music and life of Prince here as uh, we've had many special guests. And our next guest is one of the most special people who joins our show and has over many, many years. She had a close relationship with Prince as his former manager and record label head at MPG Records. She's an entrepreneur and she's a great friend of our shows. We welcome, uh, in between traveling around the world, Jackie Thompson. <laughs> hey, yeah. Joe. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm bigger than what I am, man. <laughs> no, 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 I mean. You, you, to, yeah. <laughs> but it's so sweet, dude. You know, I started to think the other day, you know, even before we were putting together this special, like I was thinking of different guests that have been on our show, and a lot of them have direct connection to you, putting them in contact with us, so we got to thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Of course, you've always been a great supporter, and and I always loved your show. So, and uh, I I just uh, enjoy them, and you do such a great job, and it's always comprehensive. And so, whenever you ask me to be on, I'm I'll be on, man. <laughs> yeah, that that's cool. And um, you know, you've been on our show several times, and and uh, for those that are just tuning in, what was your first introduction into Paisley Park, and then? Then I'll, then I'll follow up on uh, how you got the big role being Prince's manager. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it was about a big role. We all played a role in, you know, helping him manage, you know, the, you know, Paisley and that. But um, yeah, I actually uh, got a call from Mike Scott, uh, Prince's guitarist, and I've been friends with some of the band members throughout the years. And he said that there was a opening for uh, the one eight hundred New Funk in the uh, merchandise. Um, uh, section of what they were doing, and uh, so I went and um, started working out there, um, got the gig, and started working with Maite directly. Uh, she was ahead of it at the time, and um, just kind of a uh, fun little story. I um, was uh, in in the office one day, and, and Maite comes in, and she says, you know, and she looked like, you know, just concerned, like, you know, I don't know, they could frustrated is the word, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I said, Maite, what's wrong? And she says, oh, we can't find um, a way to get in touch with uh, Sugar Blue. And I said, oh, Sugar Blue, the legendary um, blues guy? And she's like, yeah. She said, he said, <laughs> and I was like, wow. I said, um, well, I have his number if you want it. And she looked at me like I was out of my mind. Uh -huh. And back then, you didn't have the, you know, it was a Rolodex, basically. I mean, you had your little, it wasn't all digital now. Um, and I know it sounds so long ago, and it, it, it feels so recent, actually. But, um, so I, I gave her uh, the number, I, because I used to book, uh, you know, nightclubs, and I booked specifically blues club, you know, blues acts, and, and it was a blues club. So I had his number, because I had just booked him, like, in Minneapolis, psh, you know, maybe six months before that, before I started working there. So anyway, long story short, just kind of grew from there. I, I started working. She came and asked me if I would head her um, dance company, MPG Dance Company, for her, with her, and work with her. Prince wanted me to do that with her. And I said, yes, absolutely. So we, we did that, and then that was, you know, fairly successful. We did about three shows. And then, um, you know, for whatever reason, at that point, I think for help, she was supposed to do dancing at that point. Right. Um, and uh, in, in, as a principal and couldn't. And so we just kind of, after you got back from the first leg, it didn't go any further. But it was so amazing that, that, you know, we sold out the shows and the shows were wonderful. And Maite did all the choreography and it was set to Prince's music. And it was just wonderful. The first night in Detroit was with uh, Stevie Wonder and uh, it was it was um, he came and you know we had some stars coming because of in Michigan you know Michigan all of the different stars and it was just a wonderful evening and then I got the opportunity really quickly this is such an amazing story I, I'll never forget it. I think it's one of my favorite nights uh, during the Prince time was um, we were all at dinner and it was myself uh, my Tay Prince, um, the PR at the time, it was Larry Graham. We just, uh, Larry had just came in to the, uh, to start to, you know, he was, um, you know, Prince at that point. And, uh, it was, um, Tony Rich. I don't know if you remember Tony Rich. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had, had, a, he had a couple yeah. Of hits, yeah. 
yeah, that the, he was a keyboard player and that, and then there was Cat Dyson, and we were all at the table and we all had dinner. And Stevie Wonder came in during that time, and the way that the restaurant was situated was we were on the restaurant side all blocked off, but there was literally a bar right connected to it. Uh, it was it was a long bar, and at the uh, front of the bar, um, it, there was a ba- you know a band set up. And so, <laughs> you know where this is going, right? Right, right. Uh, so um, Stevie Wonder leaves and comes back, and he's got his harmonica. Mm-hmm. So we all go across. Can you ma- imagine? No one knows this is going to go down. They're in there having a drink in a little speakeasy, right? right. Probably going to listen to some cover band or something. And the cover band had let us uh, use the uh, equipment. And so Prince was on drums, Larry Graham on bass, Cat Dyson on guitar, Tony Rich on keyboards, and Stephen Wonder sang and uh, played harmonica. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Never, yeah. never recorded, oh, right? It hasn't surfaced. No, it's recorded in my mind. That's, right. I mean, and the people that, you know, probably 50 people that were in there, you know, they all dropped their drinks, you know, they couldn't believe it. And then at the front of the bar was all open, the glass was all open. Right. Yeah, you know, as far as just the glass, that, and you could see the band, you know, the, the whatever house band, and you would watch people walking by, and then they'd stop, and then they're looking like, I'm not really seeing what I'm just seeing right now, right? And right, they'd, like, right. back up, and they couldn't believe their eyes. You know, you could see Prince's back, he's, like, jamming on the drums, and they're, you know, they're grooving and everything. And then you see people waving, come on over, come on over. They couldn't get into the bar, up, you know, but they could see it. And it was just so surreal and crazy, and those were those were fun times. I, I enjoyed that. So I, I got lucky. So, so what really, city was that in again? That was in Detroit. Oh, Detroit. Okay, that's right. On yeah. the Maite thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, that was a fun one. But anyway, it, it grew from there. Um, it was successful, and then he had me go on to his tours and start doing all of his merchandise and creating that. And then, uh, you know, I started, the next thing you know, I'm pretty much... Uh, managing different aspects of it um, and uh, creating, uh, you know, the different marketing uh, for MPG Records. And uh, and then we did, you know, a bunch of records there. You know, we did Come to My House with Shaka Khan. Mm-hmm. The GCS 2000 came out of there at that time. And then New Power Soul. And then we also did the 99 Remaster. Uh, and um, uh, then, then, of course, came... Um, the rave onto the Joy Fantastic, which he did a one-off deal. Londell had done for uh, was uh, Clive Davis. Right. So yeah, so. so we were doing all that, and I did um, a lot of stuff with the rave album. You know, the EPK. Mm-hmm. I started doing a lot of his uh, concert footage, uh, 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 coordinating all the stuff for the, um, the you know the celebration for the 2000. You know, 1999 going into 2000, and uh, the um, uh, what was called a secret gig, uh, and uh, with the Cafe de Paris I did with Prince, myself and him in the editing bay alone, just me and him. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did a silly video called Come On, <laughs> which was fun, but it was like crazy because it was all uh, beta SP shot like on the road. There was like no kind of um, any kind of put together. We just shot a bunch of footage while we were overseas okay. and then just kind of put it all together uh, and just made this, and it was beta, it wasn't digital, it was like totally analog, you know, beta, you know, beta SP back right. then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Quality. yeah. It wasn't film, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was like, but it was all intentional. It was the one where he was the old, old guy. Yeah, yeah, he was in the park with Larry right? Graham. And, like, yeah. Right, that park was right in London mm-hmm. and um, he had me get a, a beta SP crew and uh, we didn't even have any permits. We just pulled up and did it right there. <laughs> it was crazy. People didn't even know it was him. Yeah, and that um, Manny was in that video as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Manuel was in it. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Marva King uh, right, was yeah. in it, uh, and uh, Rhonda was in it at that point. You know, um, and uh, so that was fun, but uh, crazy stuff. But it was such a such a fun time. So. Yeah, it was such such a creative time, and you know, you were right in there. And let me—I I wanted to always ask you about the music. I—I I know you were also involved in the Crystal Ball, right? 
Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I came in on the tail end. Okay. I got the, uh, it had already started down the road of uh, being, you know, uh, done. They had started doing pre-orders before I got there. And so I had to come in at the tail end of Crystal Ball and uh, kind of um, help make it happen. Right, um, right. There was definitely some, <laughs> as you said before, right now we talked about this, there were some glitches, but ultimately it was pretty amazing, the idea and the concept behind it mm-hmm. of having, um, I think we were basically the first to really do it on, uh, you know, on our own and, you know, charge $50 a pop and, um, and uh, you know, he made really good money from that. Right, right. And um, it, was a, it was really innovative. And he was always innovative like that. I always loved that about him, that he was always ahead of the curve on everything. You know, Paisley Park was ahead of its curve in time and thinking about that and him self-investing in himself and not in a way that a lot of, you know, stars do when they get a lot of money. They invest in, you know, homes and just live in that style, that lifestyle. Right. Where he did that, but he really realized how to invest in himself and his own brand and really control that. And I think that was really interesting about him. Now, now, when Prince was putting together the releases during the time that you were uh, running MPG Records, did did he play a lot of the music with you know for you, and you put your input on you know the sagging of of the different tracks and order and stuff like that? No, oh, okay. no, they were it was already done, uh, okay. really, pretty much when he, you know he come with it pretty um, much together. I mean, he knew what he wanted. It was you know he didn't want anybody else to tell him what he wanted to put. That was the reason why he was independent. So he'd sag his, you know, he'd work with Hans and Tom Tucker and whoever was there, and they would create the flow, and um, and then uh, Steve Park would create the artwork, and he'd approve the artwork, and um, and then we'd put it all together, and then I'd get it manufactured, um, and then, um, you know, we would uh, drop ship to Target and Best Buy and whoever ordered, you know, and Wondell created a um his own you know just a, a way for us to have the uh, distribution mm-hmm. uh we didn't have any distributor so it was just totally independent so it was wow. definitely different than anybody else that had ever done and you know luckily in minnesota um you know target was right there the headquarters and best buy and so you could go down and meet with the heads and and you know they agreed obviously because it's prince uh, to just, you know, take his product on without having a major distributor. Jackie Thompson is with us, and, uh, of course, she had a, a long uh, business relationship at Paisley Park, Prince's former manager, MPG record head, and she is involved in so many different projects of her own now, and um, we uh, want to let you talk about your own project, and then we'll get back into uh, uh, the Prince family Um you, you you run your own uh, spirit company, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the one thing that uh, Prince definitely did for me, you know, I stayed there probably not as long as other people, and, you know, other people were closer. But, um, but what I did take from him and what he imparted in me was to be your own self, to, to jump off the cliff okay. and to... Do what you want to do and love what you do and do it with passion and work hard. And so, you know, when I do things, I think about that. I think about him and how he did it, how he created and manifested his thing. And so, you know, you know, I wanted to start my own company and be my own brand at a certain point, kind of moving away from music. And, um, you know, he's in the back of my mind. It's so funny. I, you know, when I think about him and 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 just, you know, he would say, Psh, you know, don't be afraid. You know, just go get out there and do it, and you know, believe in yourself, and you know that type of thing. So it it's helped me I, to know that you know I can do anything I put my mind to if I work hard at it. And you know, it's a little bit of talent, a lot of hard work. You know what I mean? So. Um, so yeah, so created a uh, spirit company. It's an agave spirit, which is similar to tequila. It's in a different region, uh, so it's kind of like that champagne Bordeaux situation. So we're in a different state uh, in Mexico, and we're, we've got created some amazing uh, uh, spirits. If you drink, it's a high end. It's sipping. It's not for shot. You know, it's not a shot type drink. You know, it's a higher end 
um, uh, drinks, and it's one, they're wonderful. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're launching, you know, officially we've been doing some test markets for the last couple of years and getting it together, and this year we, we launch. So we're really excited about that. And where can people go uh, to find out more information? Uh, rebelspirits.com. Okay. R-E-V is in Victor. You know, elspirits.com. Yeah, yeah, Rebel. Celebrate. Yeah, we're so, here. Um, okay, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, no, you go ahead. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Okay. No worries. Yeah, uh, Jackie Thompson is with us here. We're celebrating uh, the life and music of Prince, our annual celebration, and uh, we've got plenty of guests and uh, up on our website. Plenty of the archive videos for you to listen to, and um, one of the, the biggest uh, – projects you you've undertaken uh since prince's passing um the prince rogers now the prn alumni which is helping so many people uh plans for that and getting together a lot of your friends and and uh for all these years tell tell us more about prn alumni yeah well it kind of started last year obviously we all wanted to get together and celebrate prince's life as a group of people that were former employees with Prince and all walks of life from, you know, production, hair, makeup, everybody that really helped contribute to create Paisley and help him do what he did and help him create what he envisioned. Um, and so there was a uh, celebration last November and we created, and, about, and we didn't know if there were going to be, you know, five people show up, you know, but uh, we, we put it out there and almost 300 people came. Wow. And it was such a wonderful event. Um, during that time, we sold um, merchandise because John Blackwell, the drummer, former drummer of Prince, who fell ill uh, with uh, brain tumors, and then also Michael Van Huffel, who has uh, been sick, you know, um, for a long time. Uh, he was a former graphic designer there at Paisley in the 90s and um, just thought it would be a way to, you know, help help them out and, you know, boost their GoFundMe. So we sold some merchandise and we sold, you know, a couple thousand. And that got me going with a couple others. We were like, wow, this is what we should do moving forward to kind of um, move the philanthropic part of Prince, you know, uh, that he had so many facets of his life. And one of them was he was really philanthropic and people didn't know. He was very quiet about it. He just did it. And so we said, let's, let's keep this going with the group that uh, worked with him. And so we assembled an amazing team uh, for the board and for the foundation and created it. Uh, it's going to be uh, a non-profit um, status here in about two months. And we're going to start doing, uh, creating um, uh, events, okay. uh, special events and special things with the, from the PR and I'm like, that you only get with that, uh, us. Uh, and um, so we're really excited about that. So um, what, one of the things that we're doing from that is we're creating a whole, like, Shopify store of really cool, interesting pieces and merchandise that you'll be able to get that goes to the foundation, and then it'll help our mission. Um, and that mission, it just we had, like, a three-prong. We really, you know, wanted to be authentic of what the type of things that he used to do and from really kind of, talking to different people that we would love for one another. We really um, narrowed it down to um, kids, you know, helping them grow in music, arts, and education okay. uh, programs. So we're going to be really focusing highly on that. We're also, a lot of people don't realize, but he was, uh, he supported organic urban uh, farming initiatives. Yeah, with Taja um, Seville, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we're going to do uh, support those initiatives and keep it going. Uh, and we, our plan is to help um, some of the already organizations that he helped already and to then further that along as well. So we're going to keep moving forward. And lastly, we're going to, we want to help our own alumni in need when they're in need, like John Blackwell or Michael Van Huffel or Rosie Gaines or whoever that's out there that's sick. Um, you know, we want to, or, or just in need, you know, we want to be able to help, you know, um, so that's part of, part of it too. But our main, Mission is kids growing in, you know, for music, arts, and education, and uh, urban farming initiatives. And is the Facebook page a PRN alumni the best place to keep tabs right now? Right now, but we are actually getting ready to launch. There's, um, it's prnalumni.org. Okay. And then in about two weeks or so, 
Um, and I'll let you know when it, when we go live, but uh, we'll have the, the store up where you'll be able to buy some really cool uh, merchandise that we're doing uh, specifically to raise money for these initiatives. So Yeah, just let us know. We'll spread the word for you. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really passionate about this. I'm really excited. Uh, everybody else is, and it's just kind of snowballed, you know, from that evening. And, uh, you know, we just had such an amazing night that night of love and, you know, just kind of getting together and really celebrating life uh, the line, and also reconnecting with people and meeting new people mm-hmm. that it's like we can't let that, that love and that energy stop there. You know what I mean? So... Um, so this foundation is the uh, manifestation of that night, really, in a way. You know, you know from right. getting together with with uh, your friends like that in November, and you know, yep. Prince's passing still still fresh on everybody's mind. You know, how how's it been going personally to 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 grip that uh, he's no longer here and stuff like that? I still can't believe it. To be honest with you, it's right. pretty surreal. Um, to me, and uh, I just didn't ever think we'd be having this conversation. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Right, right. You you know, I think what's weird for me is like to say in him in past tense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that's the oddest thing for me. I I sometimes I step back and I'll go, did I just say you know, you know the past tense thing? It just uh, it's um, pretty odd my mind still so it's it's definitely fresh and um you know paisley park's doing a great job and you know what they're doing this coming week so that should be pretty cool for people um yeah. so that'll be neat yeah hopefully yeah. they they build upon it and it'll become annual yeah yeah, yeah hopefully you know so all i know is we'll, you know our group is going to work really hard to help keep that philanthropic part alive and you know that's our mission and we're, we're excited about that uh, Jackie Thompson is joining us uh, once again for our Prince Music and Life celebration here. And uh, we used to do Minneapolis Music Month, but uh, right now, Prince, I guess, you know, one time he'd celebrate the day he died in a an interview. So that's, that's, I guess, everybody's following the wishes like that instead of his birthday. So, yeah. 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 That was actually, I remember I was there. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You um, were involved in that. Yeah. It that's was, right. that, yeah. It was for VH1. Mm-hmm. And he was um, with uh, uh, Spice Girl, right. uh, uh, Scary Spice. Scary, right? Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> and it was a good one. It was a really sweet interview, you know. So yeah, but uh, yeah. Um, you also are involved. We I just found out with uh, some some things with uh, the revolution or getting going out on the road as soon as they hit this uh, Prince Paisley Park celebration. They're doing a pretty extensive tour. Uh, you know, what are you, what are you well, doing? They're going to do them? some. I'm not really fully, and Mark called me up, Mark Brown, and wanted to do an after show, uh, kind of keeping that experience alive after the, um, you know, after their performance. And so there's going to be some select cities where there'll be an after show, official after shows, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, one in San Francisco, uh, one coming up in, on the 27th in uh, Silver, is it Silver Springs? I always get that mixed up. Silver Springs, Maryland? Maryland. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Silver Springs, Maryland. Uh, that's uh, Thursday, the uh, 27th. So they leave Paisley after their performance, and then they're going to Chicago to perform, and then they go there, and so we'll do a fun after party there, you know, uh, just to keep that experience going. Right. And then uh, do San Francisco, and then um, also um, uh, Detroit as well. So. Oh. so so let me ask you about Prince after parties, you, you know, speaking about after parties. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Part, part of going to see a Prince show was always the hope that he was going to show up right after the show and do another legendary after show. What what went into the night for him to actually say, I'm going to play on stage? Was it spur of the moment a lot of times? or? Well, he would always have us on point during the day uh, at every event. And then probably around 2 o'clock, he'd say if he wanted to do... Um, um, an after show set or he just might want to go out okay. so he would let us know and then he would have someone either go out and find a spot or I would go out with them and uh, when I was there I'm sure he did the same as other times it's just you know my perspective of how we did it during our time and um, we'd go find a, um, a, a club and then uh, 
you know, we would then, the back line would head on over to the club at, after the show. And then they'd set up, and then he'd get it, come on in and play at 2 o'clock in the morning or 1 o'clock or whatever time until the, the uh, it was light outside. I remember, this is a perfect example, uh, Madison Square Gardens, we did uh, a, a show and he wanted to, do, to perform after. So we found a club called Life. It happened to be a little further, you know, Manhattan's challenging. So right after that show, all that back line had to head on over to Life. Mm -hmm. And there was so much traffic and everything, so... He literally didn't get on stage until probably around 2, 2.30 right. in the morning. And I would be um, at the front door taking, you know, it would be, you know, the door, making sure the door, and then, um, you know, kind of making sure everything was good. And then he got on stage, and I remember leaving the club that day, <laughs> that night, that day, <laughs> that morning at 8 a.m. I remember opening up the doors to life, and it was like light out at that point. I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> let's go have some breakfast because, you know, and get on the plane for the next show. Um, so those were kind of the flow that would happen. Yeah. So. Yeah. A lot of the great right. experiences yeah. that we know wouldn't have happened without your help and, and a lot of great, great friends you work with all these years. So oh yeah. We, we got to thank yeah, you for I'll, that. I'll, I'll, they work really hard. You know, all the people that were came before me and after me and, you know, with me and, you know, I don't credit myself for it. I just was working hard trying to, make it happen, you know, so, um, but it was a lot.